Hi everybody. Today we will look at the dash join JSON schema form component. The purpose of this open source component is to assist you or to make your Angular development more, more easy and more compact, especially when you deal with data entry forms. So we can have a look at this picture down here that shows you just how it works. So the whole um, component is based on JSON schema. Now, what is JSON schema? Let's have a look at the uh, JSON schema website here. Uh, so it's about to become an IETF uh, internet standard. And it's a JSON vocabulary that allows you to express the structure of a JSON document. So along those lines, we can use it for um, assembling forms where we tell the system what kind or what kind of structure we would like to enter via the form. Um, specifically, JSON schema is also extensible, so it allows you or it allows us to enter additional information about this um, about this structure. Um, specifically, we can include things that describe how the form should be rendered and how people can enter the data. And that's uh, something that we uh, that we use in this component. So you specify the form in a declarative way using the JSON schema plus some layout um, uh, markup, and the form is rendered automatically. And that's something I will uh, demo right now. So let's head on over to this uh, live demo playground, which I've opened in this new tab. On the screen here, you see in this box, we see the raw JSON data, which is underlying the form. Over here in the second text field, we see the JSON schema that is underlying the form. And over here, we see a bunch of examples. Um, and down here, we see the form rendered. So at the moment, we have the most simple JSON schema, which is only a single string. Um, things get a little bit more interesting if I, for instance, switch to the array. So we have in the JSON schema, we have type array. And the individual array items are of type string. And I have some sample data A and B, and I can, for instance, add um, the string C to this example, and it shows up over here right away. So far, so good. So with the widgets, that's the first, uh, let's say, um, JSON schema extension that we're using. We can tell the system what kind of, um, what kind of input widget we would like to use. So for instance, we have a date picker. So again, we have a string. Uh, representing the date, but we would like uh, the widget date to be used. And so we, for instance, here we can very easily enter, um, you know, pick up a certain month and year and have a nicer input form. The same goes for file upload, for instance, where we can choose a file to upload and the contents of the file will be put into the string. Um, or we can have a password, for instance, um, where the different um, keys are hidden using these, um, these symbols here. In the next section, we see the JSON schema constructs. So for instance, we have uh, enumerations that by default show up as a um, combo box. Um, we have a bunch of constraints we can put on the schema. So we can say that a certain input field is required. This ID, for instance, here is required. And once I start typing in um, um, a certain string, the form becomes valid and um, the error message disappears. Same goes with um, um, with maximum, minimum, multiple, etc. So the whole bunch of, um, so we support uh, draft six of JSON schema at the moment. Um, there's additional, um, additional markups. So for instance, we can define examples. Um, so that gives the user a hint as to what kind of input we expect. So in here, you see a possible entry. And if I um, change that, of course, in the form, it shows up uh, dynamically. Um, the references is an in interesting construct so we can that allows you us to structure um, and make parts of the schema reusable. So here, for instance, we have a definitions which contains the address and we actually reference it twice um, for the work and home address. And I can, um, for instance, here enter some zip code and some city. Um, and again, you can see that uh, the sub elements are, are filled in uh, accordingly. The interesting thing is we can also reference an external URL. So here, for instance, we have a JSON schema, which is hosted on GitHub, which I can load and include um, in this local schema here. This is actually a, um, I think an insurance uh, ontology 
And you can see that the um, respective elements of this ontology immediately populate the, the form. So that's quite interesting if you want to reuse certain central uh, schema information. The logic section allows you to um, embed some, um, some computational logic. So here, for instance, we have a typical example where I have first name and last name, and I can compute a sort of salutation, dear AB, for instance, where um, I can provide a template saying that the computed field should be, um, should be the result of the string concatenation. Um, error message allows me to customize the error message, so specifically in conjunction with the constraints above, that's quite useful. I can add uh, error messages in different languages, um, etc. There's a special section on autocomplete, so that's, uh, that's quite important. Um, so here, for example, we have um, a simple autocomplete where I can enter some, um, some strings here and I can start typing. The autocomplete works uh, immediately. And the interesting thing is that this, uh, the choices are actually loaded via REST from this endpoint um, over here. Uh, and there's even a, some functionality that allows me to, in case the uh, JSON result is not a single list of strings, I can even use a JSON pointer type syntax to select um, the uh, choices that, that should be displayed. Um, I also have, uh, for instance, the possibility to uh, not have an autocomplete, but have a fixed input field like this one. Um, layout is very important, again, for um, specifying how the form should be laid out. So there's a number of different options. So we can have a, for instance here, a tab layout where I can um, have different items of the array um, that I'm editing uh, show up as, as tabs. The same for table. So here I can add rows and delete rows. And um, again, here the array is populated with a new um, array object. Uh, or, or a new object. Um, I can specify that um, certain elements should be arranged in a, um, in a vertical way. So here, for example, these um, inputs are um, assembled uh, vertically. So adding a new one to the array uh, shows up down here. Again, horizontal um, shows up in a horizontal layout. Nested, I can actually change. So I, I have um, a horizontal layout on the upper level and I have a vertical layout uh, inside. So this vertical layout applies to the different fields of this object over here. Um, and here I also have, um, let's say, some array select functionality. So I can, I can select multiple, um, multiple countries um, and they make up an array, but they're rendered as a, a multi-selection combo box. So of course, all of these elements can be combined. So for instance, we have a complex example which shows a little bit larger form, um, which combines many elements. Um, so this is some sort of uh, person entry. I have um, a country that the person's from using a REST-based um, uh, choices option. I have different email addresses uh, together with uh, validation. So here, for example, this is not a legal email anymore. I have to consent to um, specify whether I consent. So um, fairly complicated logic, uh, again, done entirely declaratively using JSON schema plus certain uh, layout extensions. Now, how can we use this or how can you use this in your project? Um, to do this, we can, um, we can Go to this example here. So we can uh, we recommend that you get started with uh, with stack blitz, um, which I open up over here, and so it brings up a small example. So it shows you all the plumbing, what kind of modules to import, uh, etc. Um, and now, of course, to get started, you would like to have your own JSON schema, um, and we recommend that you, or you can assemble your JSON schema, either you have one at hand already, or you can actually use this layout editor. So if you follow this link over here, um, it's actually, um, it actually uses a schema that is that describes JSON schema itself, so a so-called meta schema, and it uses the very same form component, so it allows you to enter uh, your own JSON schema here. All right. So it's pre-populated with a small example where we have name, age, and emails. 
And down here would be the form that is ultimately displayed. And in here you see the JSON schema that's, that's resulting. So let me change this a little bit. So here, for example, on the age, I would like to say, well, there's a minimum age of uh, 18. So I add a constraint to the age property. And maybe let me add a, um, an address. And address should be an object. I specify that type is an object and um, of course I have to for the object specify the properties and the properties should be well maybe the city the city is of type string and I have a zip code which will also make to be a, a string so a very simple um, example over here and that brings us to our, um, so that looks good down here, the form, we can go with that. And so all you have to do is just copy and paste the schema. And now head on over to the Stackblitz demo. Now let's have a look at the code here. Um, so first, maybe let's get started with the um, HTML. So the HTML is fairly simple. We just use the JSON schema form component. We have a two-way binding to the value and a two-way and a binding to the schema. Um, and we also have an error, which um, is an output of the form that tells us if, if, the, if the form validates or if there's a validation error. And so if we look at the main components, uh, so, so that's just some, some dummy output. So print just prints the contents of the form and validation prints the error, just so we can see um, for debugging uh, what's going on. And the actual component is also very easy. So we have the schema over here and we have the, the default value. So the default value, let's just stick in null for now. And the schema, I can just copy and paste what I assembled using the, um, using the, using the JSON schema editor just now. Um, and that's the output over here. So the only thing I would like to change is that I specify the layout so you, you can see that this uh, Stackblitz uh, IDE immediately uh, gives me some, some syntax help as well. And let's choose the vertical, vertical layout over here. So let's make this a little bit bigger. And now um, I have the name, so I'm Joe. Uh, maybe I'm five years old and immediately I get an error message because we specified that, um, um, that the age has to be over 18 and um, I have a city so let's say I'm in New York and a certain zip code 134 and I can specify some email addresses here all right and you can see the um, the output which again using two-way binding is stored in the value um, the variable and the validation is Zero, so you can, or is, is an empty string, so no validation errors. So you can very easily now add a submit button uh, and make it show up if, um, if the validation is okay and just access um, this, uh, uh, these variables. So we hope you like this presentation. Uh, we hope you like the form. Let us know in the comments. Um, uh, follow us on Twitter, stars on GitHub. And thank you very much. Looking forward to your feedback.